All right, so it cut me off, and the reason why is because I have the free version of this screen recorder, and it only allows me to record for 15 minutes at a time. So my last thought in, in the last video was on how I had a youth pastor and me. Um, we got stuck in a hydroelectric dam. Um, not very good. Um, but on the ideas of these hydroelectric dams and, and the hydroelectric power, um, it has lots of advantages. There's no pollution at all. There's really no health risks, um, unless you're kind of dumb like I was when I was a teenager and went swimming where there was a hydroelectric dam. And we knew there was one. Not smart, right? Um... It's also constant and predictable power. I mean, sometimes the waters will rise, sometimes they'll fall. You have flooding that happens, um, but for the most part, very predictable. Here's the disadvantages, because we can't do this everywhere. Um, unless you have a pretty major waterfall or somewhere where you can have and collect um, uh, the movement of water, you're not going to have um, a lot of spaces available for construction. It also just depends on the water available. You can't make more water. Um, and it has an impact on nearby ecosystems. So consider um, maybe salmon that are swimming upstream, um, and all of a sudden you put a massive complex which blocks the salmon, and the ones who do uh, try to swim up this turbine um, get shredded. <laughs> um, not good. So it does have an impact on ecosystems, um, albeit um, a lesser impact than many other forms of pollution. Nuclear power. Um, it is electricity generated by the reaction in a nucleus. There's two different kinds. You have nuclear fusion and nu nuclear fission. Uh, fission's the first one. It's where you take something large and you rip it apart and that creates a whole bunch of energy. And we're dealing with atoms here. Um, typically, we take uranium. Uh, uranium's right here on the periodic table. It's element number 92, and we take uranium-235, which is a very specific type of uranium, and we rip it apart, and it becomes all sorts of things, and it releases all sorts of energy. And um, nu nuclear fusion is where we take two small things and make it a large thing. Our sun uses nuclear fusion. Um, takes a hydrogen and a hydrogen, you know, pop, now you got helium. And a whole bunch of energy is released. Um, the problem is nuclear fusion, right, in order for it to occur, it has to occur at temperatures of over a million degrees Fahrenheit. It's quite warm. And uh, we, we really can't control that much yet. Um, so we don't use it all that much. But... Um, nuclear power is, is very, uh, very useful. Um, uh, I don't go into great details on this, um, but a lot of people are afraid of it, right? Um, in fact, um, where I used to live in Quakertown, there was a neighboring city, and um, they built a huge nuclear power plant there. And they built it behind all these new houses and a housing development. And they didn't tell the people. And, of course, the houses, which were beautiful, $400,000 houses. This would be like living in Lakewood Ranch. Um, just beautiful houses. They went down to, like, uh, just such low cost because people were all afraid of this nuclear power plant behind them. What if it's poisoning me? Really, they're, it's very, very safe. It's one of the most safe and effective uh, uses of energy. Uh, that we have. In fact, it's it's even sustainable, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, a nuclear chain reaction is a process of splitting um, atoms that trigger more atoms to split, and so you have this uranium, and pow, it becomes two different things. Um, but these two different things release these little particles, they're called neutrons. Um, and those particles set other uraniums. Um, on fire almost, and that sets other uraniums and other uraniums, and it causes a chain reaction. It's like um, it's like gossip. 
you know, you say, uh, you say one thing and then all of a sudden the whole school knows, right? Um, that's just how things work. Someone passes it to someone and they pass it to five different people and those people pass it to five different people and all the, and, and now the whole school knows. That's a chain reaction. A nuclear reactor, um, there it is again. Anyway, we were talking about the, um, uh, the uranium as a fuel, very effective fuel. Um, and it's sustainable. Why is it sustainable? Because uh, there's something called a breeder reactor. These breeder reactors actually produce more fuel than they use. It'd almost be like, um, it'd almost be like we have a steam, um, uh, train, um, and uh, it's, it's just chugging along, and all of a sudden, uh, we get to our destination, and there's more fuel than we actually put into um, the train to begin with. That'd be crazy. That's never happened um, before with any um, fossil fuel. Uh, but breeder reactors, we, we've learned to control them so that at the end, we actually have um, a whole bunch of stuff uh, that we can use and throw it right back into the reaction and keep on making some energy. Very effective. So what's next? What is our responsibility? Um, because you're going to be future leaders. Um, some of you guys are going to be engineers and doctors and lawyers and uh, maybe even politicians or um, leaders in, in that way. What's our responsibility? Responsibility is follow God's command for the care of the earth and trust him for the future. We have, we have to keep in mind this principle. Um, take a look at Genesis 8.22. This is an awesome promise made to Noah right after the flood. Noah's probably scared. Flood had never happened before. And God promises Noah, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. We're never going to get to a point where the earth is so messed up um, that we're not going to have seed time and harvest. We're not going to have cold and heat. We're not going to have summer and winter. Um, that's, a, that's a promise um, that while the earth's still around, everything's going to be okay. Now, that doesn't mean we, we, we can make earth a, a bad place. I mean, you can pollute something pretty bad. Um, you can mess up the water supply. Does that change God's promise? No. Um, God's promise is general. Um, and his promise says that, um, that he has made the earth, um, while it lasts, to um, be on consistent cycles, like the seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter. Um, we ought to take our best care of the earth, but ultimately God controls everything. And that's where we're going to end. So you're all done, chapter 12. You got the test coming up. Um, now would be a good time to start thinking about that exam. It's going to be coming quick. Now, as of right now, I do not know whether we're going to come back to school to take the exam or whether we're going to be um, taking it at home or online with a proctor. I, I, I don't know. Um... But make sure that you are all um, ready. Maybe maybe glance over some old notes um, in your free time, right? Do, if you have tons of that laying around. Maybe shut Netflix off and uh, take a look at some old notes. All right, but that is all. Um, until I see you again, sayonara, hasta la vista, ciao. And this is the end of chapter 12.